Good morning, folks. The sun is erupting. Mexico was shaking. We've got science news on our star, galaxies, and one on a special kind of nova that points back to how the recurrent 12,000-year solar micronova might unfold. We're at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star with two eruptions on the north. The first will be above the Earth scale on the right, at the northern active region. The second is a filament that releases at the end of the frame to the left, also on the north. The production of flares crept up into C-class range, but it was the ejecta that mattered more. And it's also unexpected that it was the north that did the eruptions. The southern sunspot groups are vastly larger and more complex, and yet they've managed to maintain a nice plasma balance as they traverse the disk. The magnetic classification says the far trailing sunspot has the highest flare potential. Then again, the sun didn't care about that last night, did it? It's hard to imagine none of the ejected material from those ones last night is headed at Earth, but we've already got space weather as the solar wind intensified yesterday and through the night. It's a minor shock and coronal hole stream merged to produce minor geomagnetic activity, but the eruption from two days ago should be arriving here tonight or early tomorrow morning, and the ones from last night still have about two or three days until they arrive. None of these should be big enough to cause concern. So we're on to Mexico. Earthquake lights supposedly seen as the major shake rocked the region yesterday evening. Casualties have been reported even in this early data stage, almost on the three-year anniversary of the eight-pointer in Puerto Madero. Up next, I don't really want to discuss this paper, but rather its continually failing paradigm. They want to look at the faint young sun and judge how much CO2 there was needed to keep us liquid rather than an ice ball. And to make their math work, they need 40% atmospheric CO2, which is more than 100 times more than there is now. The problem is, the young sun was not faint. This is an atrociously poor and shockingly pervasive concept in astronomy, and this is even as most astrophysicists know that younger stars spin faster, have stronger magnetic activity, and more powerful flares. Over time, they spin down and begin emitting smaller events. Speaking of the sun, it may not be firing the flares it did as a teenager, but it's got some old man strength and it can pull it out here and there. And for some reason, scientists are beginning to wonder if it's worth worrying about. While you have likely seen all the mainstream articles about solar storms recently, this one is going in the other direction. They say that the flight measures taken to protect people from solar energetic particles is not worth the cost to the industry. Something tells me they're not thinking about Earth's weakening magnetic field and what says the moment they stop playing it safe, we get a super flare. Anyway, quick shots at the galactic level here. First is an examination of ultra-diffuse galaxies and it's now believed that repeated collisions with larger galaxies, while on eccentric orbits, is what is allowing them to be so depleted. We also have one on the plasma halo surrounding the galactic disk. They say that as the stars in the galaxy begin to nova, they pump material out into the surrounding area and not one single member of that crew wonders if after billions of years that puff of plasma is actually the dark matter halo they've been seeking. Anyway, speaking of nova, folks, the sun increases sunspots every 11 years. Every 150 to 200 years, there's a minor super flare. The bigger super flares take 1,000, 3,000, and 6,000 year cycles, the 6,000 being the solar Heinrich Bond cycle. But if you are new enough here to wonder if there's another level at the 12,000 years harmonic, the isotopes of Earth, the stories of the black sun from religion and to Egypt and Sumerian stories, to the way to induce a planet-wide electric surge, the cyclical deluge and more, the answer is the recurrent solar micronova. While we've thoroughly shown how some stars nova and it's not even as big as solar flares, today we're getting back into the mechanistic action. Most think of nova events like a nuclear explosion, but the recurrent ones, the smaller ones, are often deflagration. Too much material accumulated in the star's atmosphere blocks the solar wind and light from escaping, and the pressure cooker builds to ignition. Excellent example here with a nod to their varying pre-nova conditions that are possible. The galactic current sheet brings extra dust and plasma and neutral gas material, while the galactic magnetic reversal coming with it interrupts the solar wind outflow long enough for that accumulation, and when the deflagration occurs, the new age of Earth begins. We greatly appreciate your support. Learn all about this cycle in the solar micronova at our 12,000-year disaster cycle series playlist. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org. Fantastic deeper look yesterday, if I don't mind saying so myself. 
We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.